Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. Got another video for you today. Uh, now the topic of this video is something that I didn't really cover or address in my in-depth tank guide series. Now there was a lot of comments on the videos and on the forums about uh, my suggestions or why didn't I, I didn't cover this aspect or what my ideas were for specs and rotations. So it's my disclaimer that I'm not personally a fan of the whole concept around battle support roles. Like if I'm a controller, I want to make sure I give up the most power to the group. I want to make sure that I'm rotating all my debuffs. I want to ro make sure I'm rotating stuns. Uh, I have group supercharges or and getting all the reses and pickups. Like that's my job. I I'm not worried about damage. That's the DPS's job. My job is to give as much power as the DPS require. Uh, and to make sure I'm buffing as well, like say with a power sight, a harness, or the claw artifact, stuff like that. Now, if I'm a tank, I want to make sure that you know I have max survivability. I'm not going to die whatsoever. I'm grouping up all the adds for the DPS, making sure there's no adds attacking the healer, stuff like that. I'm running group shields like mass density just to help support the group. Uh, that's that's my job as a tank. I understand that, like say you're higher geared and you want to run lower content. Yeah, you don't need that survivability because you're not going to die regardless. So then it gives you the opportunity to do some extra damage rather than just being like full tank gear, full survivability. So basically, what we'll follow in this video is my suggestions for different rotations and different specs uh, to approach the the battle tank uh, perspective. So it, just be mindful that. The group doesn't always know that you're going to be a battle tank. Like the healers may not know you're you're going to be battle tanking. You're going to have less survivability. Uh, the controller and may not know you're using as much power because you're battle tanking. You know the DPS might not know because you're sacrificing some pulls and survivability that you may die. Uh, so I, I wouldn't want you to get kicked from a raid because you've died six times because you're trying to battle tank. Like that's that's what I'm basically trying to give you that takeaway. So just take these rotations as um, knowing when to use them. And when not to use them like if the situation calls for it then you need to switch to one that has full survivability and if it doesn't you're running some old content you're not going to die anyway then yes you could uh, start to use these for uh, to do a little bit extra damage so take care guys once again all the timestamps so it's like atomic fire ice and rage will be in the comment section in the pinned comment so if you want to skip to that specific tank uh, then you can skip right to it and uh, let's dive into it Okay, to start with Atomic, uh, in terms of a spec, once again, it, Atomic is obviously going to be super powered, but the nice thing about it is most tank power sets besides fire don't need to take the critical healing chances at all. Uh, it doesn't really benefit them. Uh, so right away, obviously, you're going to be putting the 20 and the 40 into the critical attack damage and crack chances. That's the first thing you do with your spec. And then for Atomic, Atomic is better, uh, obviously, since you're going to be comboing uh, to keep it as a might um, battle build instead of a precision. So you want to put everything you can into might and then all the rest into Dom uh, so you have an increase in your aura heals. Uh, don't worry about specking health. Don't worry about specking resto. Just take the DPS crits. That's the most important aspect of it. Put the rest into might and then take some Dom as well. Now, in terms of gear, uh, this is where the battle aspect gets a bit tricky. It, it becomes uh, kind of some give and take. So the most important aspect you want to know for each battle support role is that you're meeting the minimum dom threshold for that raid. So see here, Shadow Gotham suggested dominance is 9,007. So what that means is if I went to this raid with like 8,000 dom, I'm not going to be able to pull any adds. So obviously that's going to be unacceptable as a tank. You can't do that. So you want to make sure you're always over the suggested dominance for that raid. So Shadow Gotham would be 9,007. Uh, Fellowship's even higher at 10,207. Throne is, you know, 7838. Obviously, the elite raids will be higher. Uh, so Shadow Gotham elite's 10,207. Fellowship's elite's the same. Uh, the Machine's like 6820. Doomsday 6820. Star 5935. So this is what this is the most important aspect that you want to look out for. So say uh, now we're aiming for that, what I say, 9,800. Uh, 9,007. So basically that's the dom that I'm aiming for here. So right now my dominance is at 10,552. So I guess I should say let's put all the tank gear on and then I can show you here. Should probably start from that. So tank, 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 tank. Okay, yeah. So uh, in a full CR270 tank spec, I'm 15,670 dom. Obviously that's going to be overkill if you're going to be battle tanking and I'm at 34,000 might. Uh, so basically at that point you're just taking off gear now I will say if you have OP items these are going to be your best friends for battle tanking 
because the OP items will have the increased might stats for DPS, like might and precision, but they're also going to have increased dom and resto uh, compared to your tank gear as well. Uh, so the more OP items you have, the, the best you, better you are. Even if you have the OP feet that now are outdated because they're, they're 232, uh, those are still going to be better because they're going to give you the extra defense. They're going to give you those tank stats as opposed to your DPS gear. So if you have the OP head, OP back, that's great. Uh, that's going to be much better suited for battle tanking. But essentially then we can put on the, the DPS head, we can put the DPS back on, DPS chest, and DPS legs. That brings us down to about 10,500. So I'm about uh, 1,500 DOM over uh, what I need to be. I'm still I'm sitting at uh, almost 36,000 might and like 12,000 prec, but that doesn't matter. And then resto doesn't really matter either. So in terms of artifacts, uh, you're still going to want the, the manacles uh, just because that's going to bail you out of any situation where you could take some damage or where you would have died um, just because uh, even that at 120, it's still going to be the one tank artifact you want to run uh, just because that's going to be the one that could actually save you as a battle tank. The other ones, really, it comes down to just DPS artifacts. You want to have as much might as you can. So the, the Grenorm is, is really nice because it gives you the 4% might. It gives you some health as well and it's some pet damage. And for Atomic especially, it sets up the Daze PI uh, for, for uh, increased damage on Geiger Blast. So uh, normally you wouldn't have a Daze PI with uh, tanking loadout, but now you do with the Grenorm so, uh, or the Grimnorm whatever, how you pronounce it. Uh, in terms of the Soul Amplifier, once again, it's 5% might, has the highest base might at 890. Uh, if you don't have the Soul Amplifier and you have the Tetra, you can run that too. But it's essentially, you just want to keep the Manacles as your only tank artifact and then just take two TPS artifacts. In terms of the rotation, it's always going to be Adam Splitter because that's obviously your pull. You need you need uh, some kind of pull for that. So you don't take uh, Atomic Organization. You just take Adam Splitter. Neutron Bomb is going to be your second uh, combo. And then basically Geiger with Adam Powered Assault. And then Density and Hard Light Shield. So basically, uh, if you're an issue, you can basically clip a combo with Density. Clip a combo with Hard Light Shield if, if you're taking some extra damage that the Aura Heals aren't going to cover. You could still run uh, Mass Density if you want it as a Supercharge. Uh, you've got some options as well, but uh, at least running two shields and then having your four DPS powers. Now, I don't run Proton Remedy. Proton Remedy is an option you have, but the only thing is if you're battle tanking lower content, you're not going to need basically two shields and the heal over time for Proton because you're going to have the heal over time from your comboing powers anyway. So it, it's not as effective where Atom Powered Assault, at least with the head mod that you need to run, the uh, critical Atom Powered Assault, you're getting 2% critical attack chance. Um, so even though it's a precision buff, you're still getting that critical chance check chance with that head mod. So it gives you some a little bit extra push and damage as well. Uh, but if it's an issue with survivability, you can run Proton Remedy, and then you want to run Accelerated Proton Remedy in the back mod. Uh, so I think here, let me just show it here. Back mods, Accelerated Proton Remedy, because then that, that helps us the cooldowns line up a little bit better. So with the you'd always be clipping uh, Proton Remedy with uh, Geiger Blast. So now item power assault will be 12 second cooldown, but at least this time now with uh, item power assault or knee proton remedy, where to go? Proton remedy, it turns 12 seconds into about uh, it's a 10%, so it's uh, just below 11 in terms of a cooldown. So you, you get lines up a bit better with the actual um, combo set powers. But uh, for now, I'll be running Adam Power Assault. But it's more just if you feel like you don't have the survivability and you're taking too much damage, then you can sub in Proton Remedy. But right now, this would be your, your best bet to go for that. So we'll kind of get into the rotation here. Enjoy here.
Okay, so as you can tell from the rotation, let's kind of go up where it started. 28, 33, 22, uh, 30, 29. So you're still averaging around 30K with it. And considering that, you know, it, it's still pretty much the, the exact same as my rotation that uh, I showed in my atomic video, except it's in tank stance and extra two shields. And you're still running, like you don't have the, uh, actually you might because you have to run fortify the salt. Um, you can't run the DPS weapon because once again, that's, that's a thousand, uh, 35 might dom drop as you can see there. So it's basically 30 K with about 35 K or 36 K might. So once again, not, uh, not amazing, but at the same time, you're still doing some useful damage because it's still like 30 K is not terrible. Uh, especially, uh, that if you had proper OP items and like 273 or even, uh, like o any OP items, it's still going to be a, a nice jump, but. It's still 30k average for for a tank. It's still better than nothing, that's for sure. Uh, and especially for lower tier content, 30k is going to be doing some nice damage as well. But don't think of it as you're going to top the chop uh, top the charts as atomic battle tanking. It, it's not going to happen. But uh, at least you're doing some useful damage to the group. Okay, so we have Earth. Earth is actually quite viable for battle tanking. It's, it's the one that's actually best suited for it out of the, any of the tank power sets. Atomic used to be better suited, but that was before stats revamp. Uh, so now with Earth Battle Tanking, the nice thing about Earth is that we still have access to a full mechanic. Uh, it doesn't really have to change anything for us. We still have access to Brick, uh, which is basically going to give us Earth and Bond uh, to be able to damage transfer to Brick, and then Brick's going to be able to taunt for us. And the nice thing about that is as well is that Fortify Golem is a six second cooldown. You can clip it with Unstoppable. Unstoppable is a great juggle. It also sets up Crush for Jackhammer. Uh, so basically you'd still have epicenter for a pull because you need a pull uh, you can it's either earth and grip earth and grip isn't the best because uh, you're still getting you're gonna have to pull them a bunch of times to get them gathered for jackhammer or epicenter like lunge in epicenter them lunge back whatever it gathers them a lot easier for a jackhammer and then basically you're just clipping fortified golem with unstoppable every six seconds so basically you're powering brick unfortunately you can't get brick a shield because it's bugged uh, that i covered in my earth video but you know it's you're still powering him unstoppable is a great juggle as well as your supercharge generator jackhammer is where your damage is going to come from brick is your mechanic uh your six power you have an option you gemstone shield for a bit of extra protection if you don't need it like a brick is doing fine and you're not dying and the healers are getting you i would run earthquake so basically or you still have the option to run it so basically my suggestion would be once you're full supercharged because unstoppable is your supercharge generator uh, once you're full supercharged switch to an armor that has earthquake bam do your 10,000 supercharge then switch back to gemstone and then switch back uh, out of combat again or eventually when you get out of combat uh back to an earthquake armory so that or even sub like just open your loadout and switch it in but um when you don't have earthquake keep gemstone shield just for an extra some extra protection but uh or if you don't need it then keep earthquake on and tomb whatever supercharge you want to run uh, and that's the, basically how you want to do it so at that point it's more uh whatever option is going to give to you as well so the same thing as before as atomic you want to meet uh or any i need the tank power sets you want to make sure you're at that minimum dom threshold so if we're trying it to around ten thousand, you know head back chest and legs brings us back down to ten five uh, puts us at uh, the same thing, the 36k might, and the same art artifacts are going to be the exact same. You want the manacles for some extra survivability, and then DPS artifacts, and then in terms of spec, the exact same DPS crit, supercharged, and max might, and then the rest in DOM. So it's basically the same uh, skill point spec as Atomic, uh, just kind of covered over to uh, Earth. Okay, so you get the idea there with Earth. Let's just go back up here. So 32, um, 36, 32, 33. Ignore the 17 because I stopped. So basically, you're getting anywhere from 32 to up to 36k damage as a tank 
wearing the majority tank gear because like all my jewelry everything's tank gear i'm only at 36k might uh and i'm getting 36k on a, on a parse and yes that's only a 10 second parse but still that's only 20 that was only a 21 percent chance uh, crit chance so once again not very high plus i got a 32 at 13 percent crit uh, so Earth is much better suited for it. Unstoppable gives you a great juggle and sets up the Super Earth Generator. So if you're running in Tomb or Earthquake, you've got Fortify Golem every single six seconds being clipped. you got Brick. Uh, so it basically just comes down to uh, some extra availability. But that's about it there with Earth. Okay, so with Rage Battle Tanking, it's a bit unique because it technically falls in both categories. You can be Might and you can be Precision. The only thing is the Precision one, uh, like just using Bow Smoke Bomb, uh, so essentially, uh, we'll get into it more when we go touch on ice and fire, but uh, essentially precision tanking is going to be the same thing. You're just doing bow smoke bombs, you'd max out bow, you'd max out martial arts, uh, you'd take, in your skill points, you would take uh, the DPS crits all prec, uh, and then put the rest into health, and then just do bow smoke bomb with uh, weapons expert. Uh, that's all that spec's going to be. The nice thing about that spec is it gives much more survivability because you've got Bloodlust, which is a reducer as well. Uh, so on a Might Battle Tank, you've got two technically two cancels, like Outrage and Inviscerating Chain, but the, the rotation timing doesn't work as, as well for that. But you technically do still have two cancels, but you, on uh, Rage, you'd have still E-Chain to cancel Precision, and you'd have Bloodlust, which is the weapon buff, to give you a reducer as well. So, And then you gives you more freedom to run like Hard Dot Shield or uh, like a Supercharge or Ire stuff like that so uh rage precision battle tanking uh well j bat rage battle tanking in general is not as good certainly not compared to like earth and atomic uh but it's still if you still want to do some damage uh then you've got this unique loadout that's for might and precision is going to be much more survivability this one is going to be uh, if you as long as you can survive like it's basically then you're basing off the entire mechanic from uh severe punishment and you've got the one shield basically so not an ideal loadout for might but uh if you want to be a bit unique with it uh you've got that option or you can just be the regular precision and if you're running like a precision one you'd run like rage bringer severe punishment bloodlust you know clip those three uh you could run redirected rage you can run e-chain and then basically you could run ire you can run hard light shield you can run dash attack like you've got an option there but uh this will be the uh, rotation here at least for this one So that one, it's got the possibility to do well, uh, like 23, 24, 22, 27, 28. Obviously nothing special, nothing ideal. Uh, I think before, in my last parser, I had a 30 before I screwed up. So it, it has the chance to do well. It is a bit weird. You can combo with Frenzy, because basically revolves around Frenzy, basically in between Outrage. Uh, so it is looks a bit awkward. Um, it does work. It, it is viable. You can still combo and, and hop around while you're in Frenzy. you still got a pull with severe punishment. You've got extra cancels if you're in Outrage or last Inviscerating Chain. Uh, it just where this one suffers is you don't have as much protection between uh the four seconds when you can drop rage crash to when you can use severe punishment again because every other time you won't be able to use severe punishment so once again just depends on what content you're running uh but if obviously this doesn't have this viability easily just go precision and you'll be fine 
ICE follows the more generic approach to battle tanking. There is no really practical might uh, ICE battle tank loadout. It just doesn't work with ICE. Uh, you sacrifice way too many shields uh, just for powers that are going to hit subpar might anyway, or they're going to be interruptible. It's just not practical. ICE has to follow the precision route if you want to take battle tanking. So what that means is spec-wise, weapons expert, to obviously taking out the critical attack chance and damage, maxing prec, and putting all the rest in DOM. In terms of weapons, it's going to be maxing a bow and taking the bow smoke on mastery and then maxing out martial arts as well. In terms of uh, actual gear here, once again, I'm still trying to get over the 10,000 dom. The set's just for, so I'm, I'm prepared for all raids. If you're safe, you're running like Hive or Machine or something like that, where it's an older raid with like, you know, 7,000 dom. Obviously, you can sub in more DPS gear, but remind you that dominance favors ice heavily in terms of the shield, so then you don't want to do too skimpy on the dom because that's where your main source of protection comes from. In terms of mods, obviously, you're going to run Critical Ice Bash 3 in the head for the crits. The neck mod, you should be able to get away with Rantless Precision. Uh, once again, if you feel yourself too squishy, just sub in Fortified Assault, that's fine. But you should be able to get away with Rantless Precision, Back, Accelerate Winter Ward. In terms of artifacts, obviously, you're going to need the Venomous Dispenser. Uh, your best bet is run the Gnorm as well, uh, or Grinorm, whatever you pronounce it, um, because it sets up the Frostbite PI for Ice for Snow Devil, which I'll show you in the loadout in a moment. So this is the most ideal artifact, plus you get the 4% prec. And then in terms of a third artifact, the Sparring Eye is going to be your best option there for Ice Battle Tanking, because not only does it give 5% prec, but you also get the increased uh, weapon damage and weapon DPS when you counter uh, on the immunity. So if there's nads doing any kind of interruptible attacks, then you get that nice bonus boost of uh, uh, weapon DPS and prec. So that's very helpful as well. So ideally, that's your, you could also run the cog too. Not that you're doing uh, the cog would help as well. Not that your health is really high enough to proc it, but once again, if you have the cog already leveled, then use that. If not, the sparring AI does well for that. So in terms of loadouts, uh, you're running Snow Devil. This is your best source of secondary damage. You're running Ice Bash. Obviously, it's weapon buff, clipping that with reflection, so you've got a shield up. And then basically you've got your pull and then two other shields. That's essentially, you can sub in hard light shield for Amazon or dash attack or whatever you want. But uh, these, that's the, you basically option number six or, but the, these five have to be pretty much set in stone. So let's uh, take a look at the rotation here. Okay, so you get the gist of it there. 22, that's obviously 5% crit, so it's like nothing critting. Uh, 22, 27, 30, even 32% at 8% crit, so hardly anything critting here. 18, that's when I didn't refresh uh, Ice Bash quick enough, so then I wasted a couple Smoke Bomb combos. But you know, same thing, 27, 32, 27, 29, 24, 26. And that's without the proc on Sparring AI. So with a Sparring AI proc, you'll be sitting at uh, well over 30, like in the mid-30s again. Uh, so it's just... Once again, obviously not earth-shattering damage. You know, you're not topping the scorecard and thing like that. But once again, it's viable damage that you can do uh, just to kind of help out and do some damage as well. So it's it's certainly it's not terrible damage. Uh, it's certainly not going to top the charts, but uh, it's something that you can do just to kind of help out uh, and have that sense that you're doing damage. But uh, it, it will get a lot nicer if you're getting the continual proc on the sparring. That's for sure. 
For fire battle tanking, it's certainly the one that requires the most skill points to spec for, uh, which is kind of par for the course of fire anyway. But in, in terms of fire, once again, it, it's a prac. There's no real practical fire might build. Uh, you'd just be using like flashpoint spam or, or like backdraft spam. You'd basically, just be juggling ads. Um, but once again, it, it's going to be subpar numbers for fire of might. Uh, and just as difficult to spec for, so you might as well go precision as well. So weapons expert, uh, critical attack chance and damage, and all precision. Now, ideally, you still want to take the critical healing chances because you're running like backdraft and stoke flames, which you'll see in the loadout in a moment. So once again, ideally, if you have the skill points, you want to spec at least like 10 into these as well. But then, you know, once again, even if 400 skill points on test, I'm running out because you still need to spec some of the stuff in the health as well. So it's certainly a bit tricky to spec for because uh, precision is already spec heavy because obviously you got to max out bow and take smoke bomb mastery and max out martial arts as well for that. So it's certainly... Uh, heavy on the skill points, that's for sure. In terms of loadouts, uh, engulf because you need something instead of burning uh, that's not stoke flames because you can't be you know, uh, using that uh, ideally because you still need to pull, obviously, uh, and then backdraft to gather the ad. So basically engulf, clip with fiery weapon, and then basically the second time you clip backdraft with stoke flames, it basically you get the burst heal after the first initial uh, smoke bomb, and then you set up um, basically your heal over time as well, and then you've got immolation and harlot shield as your shields. Once again, harlot shield you can sub out for different powers, but uh, essentially that's, gonna, that's what it's going to be. In terms of the rotation, we can take a look at here. So that gives me an idea for fire, 28, 27, 27, 30, 23, I was slower on fire weapon, uh, basically that's 29, and that's all at uh, 20k prec. So once again, with better gear, with anything on the sparring A proc, uh, that turns those numbers into like low to mid 30s, which isn't terrible. So fire, fire DPS battle tanking is not... It's not a slouch, it doesn't suck, it's just not a survivability. So basically, you've got backdraft clipping with stoke flames to set up your hot, so you've got a burst and then a hot. Then you've got, you can clip smoke bomb with any immolation or hard light shield or any shield you need to to survive. But uh, this isn't going to work with an end game content. This is more for like lower content, messing around, older raids, stuff like that. But if you want to do some damage with fire, this is how you do it as precision. So at least this gives you a brief overview of battle tanking. Uh, once again, I've kind of made my thoughts and feelings on the issue well known. Uh, you can continue the discussion in the comments. If there's other people that have more success with battle tanking, you can share your loadouts and rotations there. Uh, basically, this is just kind of give you a stepping stone for it. Uh, but be mindful, once again, I said of the group is uh, just be mindful that you don't know if they know you're a battle tank. The healers could be thinking that you're too squishy and they might kick you or you're not doing, uh, you're dying too many times because you don't have that survivability. Um, Earth is, it's a, Earth is perfectly viable to battle tank, uh, just the way it's set up. Earth is completely viable. The rest, you know, ice and fire relies on precision. Rage is kind of in between. Uh, atomic is still uh, viable as might, but once again, you're going to get stunned out of those combos a lot too, so it's going to slow down your damage a lot as atomic uh, in actual practice. So once again, atomic isn't as viable as it was in the past because of the, the being stunned out of the combos because you can't keep them perma-jungled anymore. So once again, it's if you want to play around with it, if you want to experiment at the lower raids or messing around in solos or duos or alerts, uh, you have that option available to you. And uh, if there's anything else I can help with, just let us know in the comments. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching. As always, we'll see you next time.